that we have with us today, Chris Copeland, Anna Marie McFarland, Ron Street, and TVMA. Uh, welcome. I'm glad you're here. We also have from the governor's office, Julie Parker. Uh, and we're glad you're here, Julie. Thank you. Okay, it's time for citizens' comments. Um, anyone in the audience who wishes to address the board uh, that has not completed a witness card, please do so. Um, individuals wishing to comment on the rules to be adopted um, will be recognized during that time when the rules are addressed. Uh, anyone making citizens' comments um, will now be recognized. We have uh, Cindy Munson and Eric Munson, uh, ladies first, I assume. Please limit your comments to three minutes, uh, if you don't mind. And, and before you start, Sandy, we'll make a note that again that uh, we miss Mr. Gilliland. And we wish him well wherever he is. Sandy wants in Mesquite, Texas. As a reminder, we are here in Stimpy Sand. Excuse me, Sandy, could you be sure that the green light is, is it on? Yeah. Okay. Bring, it, bring it closer to you. Okay. Can we start over? Please. Cindy Munson, in Mesquite, Texas. As a reminder, we are here in Stimpy's name. We will never be silenced. We will never forget. At the, be at the board meeting in June, some of you spoke to us off the record. We were told that some of you wanted to get together with us to discuss many of the issues. We are still awaiting that get together. As the old saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. Some of you seem genuinely concerned with the issues we have continued to raise. But then, at the end of the day, all of you voted to, post all of the, to pass all of the rule changes that many of us have grave concerns about. Was it just lip service? We are not here to be patronized. We are here again. We will be here in the future. We are not going away, ever, until changes are made to this board's corrupt complaint process. Countless animals in the state remain at risk every day because this board fails miserably to hold many bad vets accountable for their actions. This board even fails to impose meaningful penalties on the very few vets that are disciplined. As evidenced by your use of the informal reprimand, which is not even included in the board's online disciplinary records, the numbers which speak for themselves bear repeating. In 2006, this board dismissed 94% of consumer complaints alleging malpractice. In 2007, it was 93%. Each of you are responsible for this because not one of you has spoke up or took a stand for what is right. A point that we will continue to bring up until it is addressed is that this board employs an investigator who blatantly lied about interviewing me during the complaint process. We have previously provided you with indisputable proof of this fact. Why do each of you continue to accept such unethical behavior? This is grounds for the immediate termination of this investigator. That is, unless you approve of his unethical behavior. And you must approve. Our complaint should be immediately reopened and assigned to a different investigator. Nobody in this world is above reproach, and if you do wrong, you should pay the price and suffer the consequences for your wrongdoing. If the decent vets in this state are not willing to really fight for the integrity of their profession, then they are no better than the vets who are negligent. Not doing the right thing can be just as bad as doing the wrong thing. We are challenging each of you to do the right thing. We would be happy to sit down with each of you and discuss <coughs> me, what must be changed to make the complaint process fair for all parties involved. You each accepted your appoint appointment to this board, and you have a responsibility to the citizens and animals of the state to protect the public. It's high time each of you start living up to that responsibility. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Sandy. Greg Munson, Mesquite, Texas. As a reminder, we are here in Stimpy's name. We will never be silenced. We will never forget it. As you may know, the board publishes some disciplinary records online and has since approximately 2005 when it was mandated by the Sunset Commission. This board has never published the full docket. The board has never published copies of the actual board orders. For the last year, this board has systematically removed many more names of disciplined Texas vets from the online disciplinary records. This board has decided to play games with what public information they choose to put in public view. Since we, the public, 
have the right to know just who is doing what to our pets by these licensees of the state. We have taken this issue into our own hands. We also have a right to know how the board handled previous disciplinary actions. If you have not done so, please take a look at our hard work online at www.texasveterinaryrecords.110mb.com. For the first time ever, the full disciplinary docket is online. Also included on this citizen advocate provided for public benefit website are quite a few of the actual board orders in PDF format. Of course, the source for all of the data is public records from the board's full docket listing, agreed orders, and online disciplinary records. As you might imagine, it takes multiple public information requests to acquire copies of the board orders. We have thus far acquired less than half of all board orders. I would think that we, that we could all agree that the Texas Veterinary Records website is, without question, provided solely as a much needed benefit to the public. Section 552.267 of the Texas Government Code is titled, Waiver for Reduction of Charge for Providing Copy of Public Information. This law states specifically, a governmental body shall provide a copy of public information without charge or at a reduced charge if the governmental body determines that waiver or reduction of the charge is in the public interest because providing the copy of the information primarily benefits the general public. Again, it is without question that the Texas Veterinary Records website primarily benefits the general public. I have asked Dewey Helmkamp and Loris Jones three times to waive the fees for providing copies to me of the board orders. I have been denied each time. It is up to the governmental body to determine if waiver or reduction of the charge is in the public interest because, again, providing the copy of the information primarily benefits the general public. For this board to continue to refuse to waive these charges proves that this board has chosen to act in bad faith in matters of concern to the public at large. I am calling on each board member to inform Mr. Helmkamp that these charges should be immediately waived now and for future board order requests. Continuing to charge me for copies of the board orders does not follow the spirit of the law and is a bully tactic that further reflects the, uh, negatively on this board. Thank you for listening. I, can I ask a question, Mr. Yes. Munson? Uh, in your statement here, you said that, uh, I guess it's uh, Cindy's statement, that uh, 2006, the board dismissed 94% of consumer complaints. That's correct. And in uh, 2007, it was 93%. Mm -hmm. What percentage of consumer complaints would you think, well, what in your mind would you think was a number that was uh, uh, satisfactory to the citizens of Texas. What, 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 what is in your head? What number? I, I would think probably somewhere around maybe 75%, but that's just a guess. I, I just know that anything over 90% is way too high. Really, anything over 85% is way too high. That's way too many. Okay. Have you looked at any other professions as far as complaint? I, I've looked at other states as far as veterinary boards go. I've not looked at other professions, no. Just curious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 